Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you guys are doing well today. I was gonna do uh, this video on camera, but I just, there was just too many things going on, so I decided not to. Welcome and thank you so much for stopping by. Um, for those of you who are new, I invite you to check out my playlist. There are vid a variety of videos that I have there that are categorized that you can find and you can browse through, you can binge watch. Uh, there are lots of different topics there. I have about relationships, family, church, church hurt forgiveness, all these different things, prophecies. There's a lot that's there that you can check out. I still have to update those lists. I've, I've been working on videos and just getting them out there, but sometimes I don't get the, ta the chance to go in and just organize them. And I will be working on that in the near, 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 near future. With that, guys, I also like to remind you all that I do have a new channel. It is not going to replace this channel, but it is another channel that I have. It is called It is called Big Sister Eight Two Four, and you go over there. It's going to be practical topics. It's going to be talking about you know everyday things. A lot of it is going to be guided towards our youth, and just give them everyday advice like any big sister would. And then there'll be other little things over there that I will be sharing in the future. As I said, you know, certain things that I like to make, little recipes. It is not a cooking channel. You're not going to see me cooking a lot over there. And it's, I wouldn't even know if it's really be cooking. I'll just be sharing little things about myself over there as well. So please feel free to hop on over there to Big Sister 824. And please just support me. Support me over there. Even if, hey, you may not have teens and it may not be your thing, but just support. Okay. So with that said, guys, I want to get on here and speak about something. And I know that I've talked about this before, but I want you all to know that you're not defined by what people think or say about you. And by that, I simply mean as believers in the Lord, as we grow in the Lord, sometimes our, our circle gets very small. And those of you who are truly walking with the Lord, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you're no longer walking in that carnality, when you're no longer walking in where, okay, we say that we're Christians, but we're still, you know, fornicating and doing different things. And we're still watching the same kind of television. Basically, you're saying a Christian, you're basically saying that you're a Christian, but you're doing a lot of the same things that you were doing when you were not a Christian. So that's what we, we will call a carnal believer. And I've been there, done that. All right. And it's not that. We're going to just be so perfect immediately because truly there are phases and things that the Lord takes us through in our growth. We're not going to just come right in and all of a sudden we're doing everything right and, oh, take this off, throw this away. A lot of people do that and that's how newborns in Christ, meaning those who are new in the faith, they step away because there's so much pressure and get rid of this, get rid of that. But little by little over time, guys. The things that we've been getting away with because we were still young in the Lord and not knowing the Lord through the more you spend time with him, he's going to you're going to begin to see certain things, habits and impulses begin to fall away. And when that happens, guys, even the things that you used to do that you thought was normal, the Lord's going to set a light on that. And you're just going to know, you know what? I probably shouldn't be watching this. I probably shouldn't be doing this. And you're going to feel grieved in your spirit like when you do stuff you shouldn't do. So during that transformation, as the Lord begins to change you and he begins to, you know, our scars of sin and, and disobedience and rebellions begin to begin to fade, you know, they, instead of them being hard, they become more subtle supple and as from supple they begin to not be so thick and they thin away and you change that's what transformation is spiritually sometimes what happens in the process of that is that your circle is going to get very very slim because suddenly you're going to realize you don't really have a lot in common with the people that you used to be hanging out with and even people that you get along with them you still realize that they're you're just not really on the same level as you guys used to be meaning i'm not cursing like you so if you if you and that person used to curse and you used to, you and that person used to smoke and you're that you and that person used to go out and do girls night and you drinking and everything when you change in christ that's no longer going to suffice that type of thing you're not going to be able to do it anymore they used to talking and gossiping with you you're not doing that anymore so 
it's going to drop off because that person is going to realize and know that there's a difference. The only way you're going to start getting along with them again is to kind of get back to where you were. So what happens when you you have that change and that growth occurs? Sometimes what will happen is when you're no longer around certain people, you're no longer in that relationship. Perhaps the Lord pulls you out of a ministry. Perhaps even sometimes your family, God will pull you from them depending on what's going on. Not all the time. That's not his first choice, but sometimes by their behavior and the things that they are doing, God will remove you from them. And nine times out of 10, that move was not immediate. So what normally happens, these individuals, whether it's your relatives, whether it's an ex, whatever it may be, siblings, they will sometimes think, well, if you're not around them, then it must mean something's wrong with you. If you're not hanging with them, oh, you must not be happy. Something's going on. If you're not in their ministry, oh, you're lost. And I find it rather presumptuous that they will take on such a position. So you're pretty much measuring yourself against these individuals will be measuring themselves against the almighty. God, that when God pulls you from them, then all is lost. If I'm not hanging with you anymore, then that means my life is wrecked. If I'm not in a relationship with you anymore, then that means that I've just lost all hope. I'm hopeless. There's no future for me. If I'm not coming to the family reunions and the family gatherings and I'm not hanging around with you guys anymore, then that means that I'm I am just living a life, I'm crazy, and I've lost my mind, and oh, woe is her, woe are you, woe is him, why? Because I'm not with you, because I'm not hanging with you, because I'm separated from you. So for anyone to even put themselves in that position, to think that if you're not with them, then your your life is going to be wrecked. If you're not around them, then you must be on, on this road to destruction. If, if you're not reaching out to them anymore, then, oh my gosh, they don't know what's going to happen. You're, you're, you're just insane. You've lost your mind. Why? That's the level of pride in which they operate in. And sometimes they got to do a self-reflection and we have to do one too to make sure we're not that way. If Someone believes that if you're not in their church, then you're lost. Then you have, the Lord was, he's on time and pulling you out of such a place. Because what pastor, what leader, what anybody will think that they are above God or they are equivalent to God. That if you are not in their ministry and if you're not with them, you're lost and you're in sin and the devil's got you. Do they not believe that God's circle and all that God is able to do go so much above and up and outside of them that they feel that God is going to personally kill you for them because you're not in their thatch roof, thatched roof church or in their mega church, whatever it may be. You're not that important. You're not that important. And if you think you're equivalent to God, you need to go ahead and just pop that bubble in your head. Because it's wrong. These people need to go ahead and go sit in time out if that's how they think. But you find that happens all the time. If you're not with them, they cut, you know, they, oh, there's a public service announcement goes out about you. And then everybody else, their eyes get fully dilated and they follow what the Simon Simon says minister tells them. Don't talk to her anymore. And so their eyes are big. Don't talk to her anymore. Don't deal with him anymore. Don't deal with him anymore. They're of the devil. They are of the devil. Come on. Stop. Guys, I'm not being cynical, but it is crazy. And it lets you know and makes you thankful that God pulled you out of that because we used to be those same fully dilated eyeball people believing stuff that people say about another person and don't talk to them anymore. Some people we owe an apology. Or we need to ask God to forgive us because you just believe stuff. And sometimes, as I said, it's your family. If you're not at the family reunion, they think you have nothing else to do. If you're not over here taking the calls, oh, what's happened to him? What's happened to her? What's happened to them? We're in God's hands. That's what it is. Because sometimes individuals will focus on the fact that you're no longer with them and not, not, not 
not taking ownership of their poor behavior and their bad behavior, how they played mind games with you, how they mistreated you, how they didn't appreciate you, how they cheated on you, how they did you wrong, how they lied on you, how they played games, how they just used you. They just wanted, they, some of them, they are looking for you, f- dialing to their hands or bleeding because they want to borrow some money again. All they did was borrow money from you and not pay it back. All they did was insult you and hurt your feelings. All they did was mistreat you, did not handle you right. And so when God pulls you away from them, oh, now they're they're thinking about the position that you've taken and you're a bad guy and taking no ownership of the fact that they abused you. Taking no ownership of the fact that when you were around, they barely wanted to call you. They barely wanted to see you. They were that sometimey friend. They were that up and down friend. They were that in and out friend. They were that in and out sibling, That the one that disrespect you, the one that said this, the one that told your business. The parents were doing a bunch of different things. And so when God pulls you away, they will automatically think oh they must not be having fun why are you the ultimate source of fun are you the ultimate source of 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 wellness and and someone being physically emotionally and mentally well and whole are you the only ones you are the only source of my happiness that's probably why the reason why some of these people behave that they do because they put themselves in that position you see there's a time that you love them so much and you still do and they took advantage of that so they see themselves as your entire source of happiness we're the fun people they declare themselves as such so then if you're not with them something's wrong with you we're the cool ones they declare themselves as such so if you're not hanging with them oh you must be the awkward one we are the most wonderful individuals they declare themselves as such so if you are not around them they are going to say things about you because they don't want to reflect on themselves what happens sometimes people put themselves as being the ultimate they're the ultimate um they're the ones that you should just be around with. They're the end all be all of everything. They have declared themselves the cool kids. They have declared themselves to be the elites. They have declared themselves to be the top 1% in the family. They have de- declared themselves to be a certain way. Why? Because a lot of times, sometimes they may look at their accolades and things that they have done. I've done this. I've accomplished this. So I'm better than you. So why wouldn't you want to be with me? Or we're the cool ones. Look at all we've accomplished. But God sees beyond the, the pomp and all the accomplishments accomplishment and God sees something within each and every one of us and if he pulls you away if God pulls you away from your mom and dad if God pulls you away from your siblings if God pulls you away from that person that you thought that was the one for you if he pulls you out of a ministry he knows best and you need to trust him and don't turn back It's easy to think about the good times but not realize that there were more bad times than good And sometimes they can remember all the stuff that they did for you because they didn't do much. They can remember those five things they did for you. They can remember those five major situations you were in because that's all they did. So guys, I just want you to stand fast in where God has placed you. I want you to be encouraged in your decisions. I want you to keep your eyes stayed on God. And I want you to know ain't nobody cooler, nobody better than Christ. There is no better be, no better place to be than at the feet of Jesus. There's no better choice to make than Christ. And if he pulls you away from certain individuals, it's because he knows what's in them. He knows what they're going to do. He knows what they will do five years from from now they he knows and he realized how they took advantage of your love and your kindness of your commitment to them of your dedication to them and he's pulled you away so that they do not destroy you And sometimes when you get to like this higher place in the Lord, people, you know, they want to pull you off that shelf. They want to see if they can still smear you and stain you. If not that, they want to talk more and more about you to kind of disgrace you. And what they do is what they do. What these individuals like to do is they are going to, they are going to go to the old stuff because that's what they have. They want to go to the old things. So they go and they go in the grave and they go where God has forgiven you. They go and bring that up. And you know how a snake sheds its skin and it just leaves that dead skin behind. So so what they're looking for now, they're going for the dead stuff. They're going to try to find, 
you know, they're going to canvas the area and try to find some details about you and find out about your past and all of that. And so they go back to that and they sit together and it's like they dig up an old corpse and they're all taking turns trying to pump life into it and trying to sit it up and trying to trying to do CPR on a dead, rotten corpse. The old you, the old man, the old person you were. And they love that. And what happens in, in the natural, if something is dead and old and you have that around you and you keep it around you, it's going to infect you. You're going to get sick. There's so many things that can happen when you have a dead body. And so they live that way. They have your past. They have all these things in their heart. And so when they cannot get you and when they see God moving and they see the Lord changing you and they see that you're literally able to stay gone because you should have been back by now. You, you should have said something by now but when God keeps you in his secret place when he's giving you his perfect peace when he's laid it all out to you and show you what's real you find a comfort in him you find your wholeness in him and they can't stand that so what they try to do is oh this she's not this way he's not this way so they go back to the dead things they want to bring up that time they let you borrow their pencil in high school they want to go back to the time where you slept on their couch when you were in college they want to go back to the times that they found you on the street in your vomit they're going to remind you that but you do not have to answer to that because whoever Christ changes when we are in Christ we are a new creature old things have passed away everything has become new you don't have to answer to what you used to do and where you were and blah 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 that's not who you are anymore and it will be an insult it will be an insult to God for you to try to bring that up to the Lord Accept his forgiveness. Accept where he's taking you. They realize that God is changing you, but what they want to do is spit on you. What they want to do is step on you. What they want to do is curse you and say things, do things to incite you so the old you can come out. So they can be like, oh, see, you're not really saved because that's what they will do. Stay where you are. Stay in the ark. We're in the latter part of our walk in Christ. The Lord may come back at any given time and don't even watch that clock. You and I can be taken at any given time. We don't live forever. We're not going to live forever. So all that love and that caring and that dedication that you've had, the Lord has brought you to a place where he's going, nope, it's not going to be destroyed. Nope. I'm going to protect you. And there'll be other people that you can pour into their lives. And you may think that you're alone, but there's a lot of other believers like yourself who God has pulled them aside, pulled them, pulled them aside and separated them. And they're in the same boat as you. And we're in a phase, as I told you, I truly believe in this phase that so many people are going through the same thing. So many believers, it's just like when a bride is getting ready to meet her groom. No one sees the bride for a while. She's in a place and only a select group of people are around her. And I believe in this phase in our life because Christ is soon to return. And we are in this place where we, everybody's just not going to have access to us. As the Lord begins to take out those little spots and wrinkles, made Major wrinkles, major spots, whatever it is, he wants us to be focused on him. And as he begins to beautify you and change you and strengthen you, he doesn't want you going outside getting dirty. And he definitely don't want you letting in no hyenas up in your space. So stay where God has placed you. Keep your mind stayed on him. You made the right decisions. Don't doubt what you had to do because they know exactly what they did. But because they're still in that denial phase, they're just going to make up their own little story. So you just got to leave them in their own little la la land. Keep your eyes stayed on God. Don't let anyone take your crown. The Bible tells us that in Revelation chapter three, let no man take your crown. The first man that can take your crown is going to be you looking in the mirror. You can cause yourself to lose your crown and the others, the other ones, the other man that can take your crown are people trying to pull you back in that hovel that you came out of. Too often people are elevating themselves and putting themselves on the same level as God. So if you're not around them, something is wrong. If you're not in their church, oh, you're going to die and burn. If you're not in their relation, in a relationship with them. And if you're not, if you're not coming home and if you're not around them anymore, oh, something is wrong with you. And that tells you just how, how prideful and how just over the top that they are. Christ is where it's at. And if he calls you out and says, stay with me and be with me and do this, then that's what it is. Be confident in your decisions and keep your mind stayed on him. God knows why he...
he pulled you away from them. God knows why he pulled you away from them. And you know what? They know too. God bless.